So to continue on with injury, and just I'll say it again, injury is when load is greater than the tolerance. Let's look at the strength of biological tissues. So our cartilage, our bones, our tendons, ligaments, muscles. So typically the strength of our tissue is due to two factors, the quantity of bone, say, and the quality, right? So the quantity is how big and its distribution of material or its architecture, so size and architecture. Um, quality is what is what it's made of, right? Is it good cement? Is it bad cement, right? So you can build a bad house out of good bricks and you can build a beautiful looking house out of bad bricks, so bad ingredients, and it can fall down. Um, I also like to think of this as, so Shaquille O'Neal has an ACL and I have an ACL. Whose is stronger? Well, mine might be stronger because maybe my collagen or my ingredients are stronger. And for the size, mine is relatively stronger and his could be larger, but maybe he has a collagen defect or a type 1, type 2 collagen problem and that makes his, his ligament, even though it's big, um, actually not as strong. All right, so we call them structural properties, right, or material properties. So structural properties are um, have to do with the geometry, so the size of the tissue, and material properties just focus on do you have good collagen, do you have good mineral, etc. And so sometimes it depends what question you're asking whether some studies look at structural properties and some material. And so in our studies looking at bone, we're interested in structural properties because typically when you exercise, it's good for bone, but typically exercise will change the geometry of your bone and not necessarily the mineral of your bone. All right, so let's look at ways, you know, frameworks for injury. You can have what we're probably all think of as injury, an acute load injury. And so this is um, like the title slide on this uh, lecture, right? Somebody's leg is pointing the wrong way. Obviously something was broken. It w occurred after a collision. It was an acute injury. And so if we're gonna put it in terms of tolerance or strength and loading, we usually put a, a tolerance line. So this is the strength or failure tolerance of the tissue. Um, we typically load the tissue down here, the small yellow loading, and you have a margin of safety, right? If you, if we walked around daily and we're almost ready to fracture our bones, that would not be good. But say somebody pushes you down the stairs or somebody hits you on the soccer field or whatever, and your load, just for an instant, exceeds that tolerance, that is the definition of an acute injury. Typically, you know an acute injury because there's blood, screaming, pain, etc. Um, you can also get a repetitive loading injury or a repetitive strain injury. And so this is much more interesting, right? Because this usually occurs um, after a certain amount of loads, but these loads are typically low, right? So if I go out running, I'm not putting a high amount of loading on my bone. I'm plodding along at my whatever nine minute pace, bing, bing, run stride after stride, why do I get injured? And so the loads aren't increasing, so what must have to happen is that your failure tolerance or your strength decreases, right? And, and going further, we have rest periods, right? And theoretically then this tolerance adapts and gets stronger. So you have this cycle of loading versus rest, but this is the theoretical framework for why you would get injured from repetitive, very small loading. All right, it's because your failure tolerance goes down. Um, and this could be like a, a, a stress fracture or a, um, a, a, a strain, well, it, sometimes muscle strains are acute. Um, it could just be like a tendonitis, could be a repetitive loading injury. And, and I invite you guys to think of other injuries that you've had or, you know, you've seen people have. 
Another type of load is a low applied load. So this might be that you're bent over or flexed at the spine all day, sitting in your chair, a nice load on your, on your L4, L5. Um, why would that injure you? Because again, if you apply this relatively small load, see it's way under the failure tolerance, over a long period of time, eventually that failure tolerance will decrease to the point where load exceeds tolerance and you have an injury. So what factors could also contribute to this injury or affecting basically either the loading or these affect the, the tolerance or strength of your tissue? Age, right? As we age, our strength gets is decreased. Gender could affect genetics, physical conditioning. Typically, people in better physical condition have um, higher strength uh, tissues, especially muscles. Nutrition could affect um, either the load or the tolerance. Psychological status: Are you afraid to get hit? Are you do you um, work out too much, etc.? Fatigue, right? As your muscles fatigue, that might um, make other tissues vulnerable, tendons or ligaments. The environment with which you're playing in, equipment. Do you have good helmets that would help prevent concussion? Human inter interaction affects loading. Um, I mean, if somebody hits you, they will increase the loading. Previous injury, that's usually the number one risk factor for a future injury and that's why it's very important to try to keep our young athletes and young kids in phys ed classes injury free so they don't injure later in life. Disease can affect the tolerance of your tissue, drugs, rehabilitation, um, anthropometric variability is um, length of our limbs, uh, just size of different tissues of people, skill level, experience, and pain can affect your loading. Um, two of the things that I just wanted to finish with is this concept of architecture or geometry. So uh, I said before, the quantity of material or the quantity, the size of a bone or a ligament contributes to its strength, but also the distribution of the material. And here's a kind of a proof of principle. So if you have a solid bar and it can resist, uh, has a hundred percent resistance to bending, right? So if you bend it, if you take that same amount of material and make a hollow structure, you can increase the resistance to bending by four times. So it can increase to 400%. If you increase to a, a larger hollow structure, you can increase that resistance to bending seven times. Granted, you don't want the, the, the wall to get too thin because then it, that could break. But this is the argument of why hollow structures are strong. And think about all the structures that are hollow and very strong. Bamboo, flower stems, right? Stems float in the wind in the spring. They don't just like bend over and break. They resist bending. Um, our bones, so hollow structures with the same amount of mass, so the same amount of bone, depending on the geometry or the architecture, can be much stronger if they're hollow. And a study looked at um, the increase in distribution of bone from exercise, and this is a comment called moment of inertia. So it's the amount of distribution of tissue away from, the, in this case, the center of the bone. Um, people that start exercising in terms of bone, young, have an increase in their periosteal side, right, which is good. So you increase more bone further away from the center. Old starters still add bone to the periosteal surface, but not as much. Um, and then controls, there's no change.